thankful and excited about you being here. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't this a wonderful day to be in worship? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to ask if you would join me in a word of prayer. Then we're going to have our praise and worship team. They're going to lead us in some praises. Amen. Would you bow your head with me? Heavenly Father, we love and adore you. And God, we thank you for the freshness and the dawning of a new day, God. We are grateful and thankful for another opportunity to gather in your name, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, we just ask that your presence and your spirit will be in this place today, God, that you will magnify and glorify yourself, that God, that we will see your wondrous work, and God, that your love and your power will abound in this service, God. Everyone under the sound of our voice, God, we ask that you meet every need according to your riches and glory, because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. So we love you, adore you, and we honor you. So magnify and glorify yourself in this house today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to ask if you would stand to your feet for a moment. Let's join the praise and worship team. Praise the Lord this morning, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I was sitting over the dishes. With tears yes, in my eyes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And I had to yes, Lord. Thank you. And yes, yes still Lord. Be better. Hallelujah. I can never repay you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Yes. How you lose my shackles and how you set me free. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see everyone made it here today safely. Uh, Want to start off, um, if you need an offering envelope, uh, just raise your hand. One of the ushers will assist you. All right. All right. Um, the scripture, uh, it's offering time, saints. It's offering time. Uh, the scripture that I'm coming from today is Acts 20, uh, and I'll start at verses 34 through 35. It says, you yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus said himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Um, yeah, uh, this, this scripture speaks to me in ways uh, just because it makes me think about uh, not necessarily giving money-wise, but just giving of yourself at all when somebody needs your help, uh, some extra assistance. Um, sometimes it feels like you got to come outside of yourself, um, doing more than what, you're, than what you need to do, more than what's necessary. But, you know, just want to send the reminder that, you know, anytime that there's, you know, it feels like there's more weight on you than you can handle. If you can still stand up, then that means that you're capable of doing it. And so by doing these things, it helps to build yourself up, um, makes you stronger. But it also, like he said at the end of the scripture, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So uh, try to operate from the mindset of always being able to give. Um, 
more than what you typically think you will be able to give. You want to give out of the kindness of your heart. Uh, so uh, if anybody needs to, or for the people that are donating online, uh, if you'll go to freshstartchurch.org and you can text uh, to that give link that they have in there and you'll be able to send your donations in. But all right, thank you. <laughs>
Amen. Jesus is my help. All my help comes from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am excited in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been praying about this day. Amen. Not only praying about the day, but praying about the babies that we're going to be blessing today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you know God answers prayer, put your hand together and give him some glory. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. 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 We don't want to take life for granted. It is a gift from God. Amen. And we have labored in prayer for these babies. Amen. And we're excited about our family that are here, and we're grateful for Michael's parents coming all the way down from the Manhattan area and seeing LaVon here, and just all the family and friends. Amen. We are excited about what God is doing. Amen. So with that, we're going to uh, ask, if we're going to get ready to bless the babies, but what we're going to do, because this is COVID, amen, we're going to ask the parents of the baby to come forward, not every, and we can have the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles because of restrictions, because of COVID. So we're really gonna have the parents to come forward, and then we're gonna ask the family to stand, amen? All right, and really for those of you who would like to hang around later, we can hang around later and take pictures and do all those things like that. But anyway, let's go to the word. Why do we do what we do, amen? Let's uh, go to the Bible with me. We're going to go, go, go to Mark chapter 10. Amen. Mark the 10th chapter. Amen. And the, uh, God has a word for us. Amen. One thing about us at Fresh Door Church, we just don't believe in just doing any old thing. We believe that really we should order and we should follow what God says. Amen. Uh, we are a group of people that love God. And we want to share his love with other people. So really, we love God enough, let me just say that, to do what he says. A lot of people talk about God, but what God tells them to do, they don't want to do it. Amen? And we're not, and we're not that church. Come on, Fresh Store, put your hand together, give God some glory. We want to line up with God's word. Amen? And in Mark chapter 10, uh, amen, you're going to find that Jesus was... Uh, Sharing, and he was dealing with some uh, people, amen? And his disciples were there. And in Mark chapter 10, going to start at verse number 13, and I want you to hear what the Lord is saying, amen? The Bible tells us that all scripture is beneficial for us, amen? And the purpose of scripture is because God created us, and not only did God create us, but God wants us to enjoy the journey, amen? Touch yourself and say, God wants you to enjoy the journey. He wants me to enjoy the journey. Amen. And we really will enjoy it because God knows some things. He knows some things. He knows the beginning from the end of things. Amen. If we allow, don't mean that life is always going to be easy, but he knows some things. And really what it says in Mark chapter 10, it says people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who would not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arm, put his hands on them and blessed them. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen, and I am excited, amen. So we're gonna ask that uh, Michael, Teresa, and McKinley, if you would come on up here. Then we're gonna ask Jordan, Johanna, and uh, Jonah to come up front with us, amen. Hallelujah. Why? Amen. How many of you were excited when you had children? Come on, raise your hand. Let's just, let's, let's just be real. Amen. Amen. How many of you became more excited when you had grandchildren? Come on, put your hand together. Come on, put your hand together. Amen. It is. They are a blessing. Amen. All children are a blessing from the Lord. Amen. And so really, we are excited about uh, you guys being here. And we're excited about this blessing time for 
our children. And let me just share as a pastor, amen, a man that loves God. And what really touched my heart is after they had the children, they said, we want to have our children blessed. Because they realized that if it wasn't for God, that they would, you know, the children may not be here. But also they realized, too, in order for their children to flourish and to prosper and to enjoy life down here on earth, we need God. Amen? So I was excited about that. And I'm excited right now as we get ready to ask God's blessing on Jonah and McKinley. Amen? And so what I'm going to do, put my hand on one. And put my hand on the other and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come. And God, we are coming to bless Jonah and McKinley. God, we know that they are a heritage and reward for you. And God, we also pray doing this blessing, God, that yeah, God, that they will be raised in a home where love is produced. And God, through that love, that God, that they will grow up in love and all things that they do will be good. And God, they will glorify and magnify you. And God, because of your love, that they will find a path of righteousness all the days of their lives. God, we are thankful, God, that for Jonah and McKinley, God, you have a plan for their lives to prosper them, to give them the good health. And God, that they may continue to live and enjoy life as you intended to be. God, we cannot even imagine what you have in store for them. God, may your goodness and your love and your mercy follow them. And God, may they be a blessing not only to the family, but to everyone that they come in contact with. So God, we bless you for these two precious babies. God, use them, lead them, guide them. And Lord, bless their parents and the family. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Can we say glory, hallelujah? Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes. Too precious. Amen. And go and just teach the kids your love for the Lord. Amen. All right. Put your hand together. Give God some glory. Come on. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold it. Come on, Teresa. Thank you for helping me out. I, I'm, I apologize. Will the family please stand? Come on. Amen. Let's put our hand together for the family. Come on. Come on. We appreciate all of you. Amen. And you continue to encourage this family. Amen. To do the things that are right, to be loving, to be kind to be considerate, amen? And they would appreciate babysitting sometime, amen? amen. Can I say that for y'all guys? Amen. amen, can I say that? They would appreciate some babysitting. Don't just talk to me, come by and get them sometime. Amen. amen. Is, that, is that okay? All right, I just wanna make sure I'm doing this thing right now. Okay, all right, love you guys. Go bless, be blessed in the Lord, amen, hallelujah. Amen. After church, you get a chance, uh, we'll get a chance to get a little bit closer if you would like to take pictures and stuff like that. But amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to ask if you would go with me. We're going to continue on. I uh, got a, a word from the Lord this morning. just want to share something with you. Uh, take your Bibles and go to, with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. I want to just share a few thoughts here. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Those of you who have online, you can text it online. You, you can ask Google to give you 1 Corinthians 13. And you know what Google will do? He will give you 1 Corinthians 13. And because I know Google, you know what he's going to do? He's going to bring it up in the NIV version. Amen. So anyway, uh, one, two. If you would stand to your feet with me for just a moment, amen. We stand to our feet in reverence and honor to God and his word, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read the first, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, 
Amen. And, and, and I want you to, let's just pause for a moment and relax. Because I'm excited. I don't know about you if you are excited. But really, what we want to do, because as parents, we want to speak into our children. Amen. That they can have a healthy and joyous life. Amen. Doesn't mean that they're going to hear us right then. But at, at least what we want to do is deposit a seed that can help them to, to, to enjoy life. Amen. And that's the same thing with the Lord. Because the Lord created us. He wants to speak into our, our lives and our spirit that we can enjoy life. Amen. And notice what it says here. 1 Corinthians started, uh, 13, starting at verse 1, it says, Though I, if I speak in the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I am a, only a resounding gong or a tink, clinging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith that could move mountains, but have not love, notice what it says, I am nothing. Number three, if I give all my, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, notice what it says, I gain nothing. Verse number four, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Then verse 6, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Verse 8, love never fails. But whether there be prophecy, they will cease. Whether there be tongues, they will be still. Whether there is knowledge, it will pass away. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. Verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man. I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. Touch yourself and say, lasting, love, love that lasts. Love that lasts. Touch yourself one more time. Say, love that lasts. Come on, love that lasts. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this moment. God, we are thankful for your presence. And God, we acknowledge you. God, you are the author and finisher of everything that we do. God, we ask that you would just let your spirit continue to just saturate this place, God, and that you will fill us with your presence, God, and that you would magnify and glorify yourself. God, bless everyone that's here worshiping with us in person. God, bless those that are online. We are so thankful, God, that for this moment of worship. So bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So really, we, uh, we are looking at, uh, we are continuing a series that Store teaching at here at Fresh Store Church. It's called uh, Building Healthy Relationships. Amen. Uh, and, and really, why do we teach that series? Because we taught that series because really, we are living in a world that all the relationships are not, as, are, are not what God should have, should, would have them to be. Amen. And how many know that since we are still in a pandemic, amen, and we're practicing isolation, sometimes we get a little, we, 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 we little short-tempered, amen? We get a little irritated, irritated and agitated, amen? And so really we find that, you know, God wants us to have healthy relationship. If you want to build a healthy relationship, you got to learn how to love. Come on, touch yourself. Say, I got to learn how to love. In any ways, the oldest things you say, I got to learn how to love even in spite of. 
Because let's just face, let's just, just tell the truth. Everybody is not like you and me. You're going to meet some people that are different. Amen. So we find that the Apostle Paul is, is, is often a glimpse of, of, of love in this chapter here. And really what he's talking about, he's, uh, he's given us an, an example, a, a definition of what love is all about. Notice what he says in the first three verses. First of all, he said that love, and when we talk about love, let me step back for just a moment. Because really when we talk about love, amen, we think about lust most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time when we talk about love. But really for the Greek, there's three definitions of love. Amen? And when Paul, you know, when God is talking about love in Corinthians 13, he's not talking about the kind of love, the filial love, which is a brotherly love that we have for a friend or relationships or something like that. He's not talking about the eros love, which is compassionate love that we have and affection toward one another. He's talking about the agape love. Amen, which is a self-giving, self-sacrificing love that I always look out for the other person. Amen. He's let me, let me say that again, because we live in such a selfish world. And really, if you don't believe me, you start talking to people about masks. You got some that want to wear masks. You got some that don't want to wear masks. You got some that want to get vaccinated. You got some that don't want to get vaccinated. You start talking about people, about not being or, or letting self go that we can help somebody else. And you got an argument. Amen? Come on, put your hand together and give God some glory. I know I'm telling the truth. I know I am. You know why? Because I live here too. And I deal with people. Amen. So Paul is beginning to share with the church in Corinth. And what I love about the church in Corinth, what he was telling them and he was encouraging them is how to live a life for Christ in a corrupt society where everybody's doing what they want to do and then trying to influence you to do the same thing. And then God said, if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do because you will do what? Keep my commandments. Amen. So I, first... First thing I, I, want, I want you to notice in the first three verses, he keeps talking about uh, if I speak with the tongue. So the first three verses begin to describe how absolutely necessary love is. Notice what he says. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and ha uh, but have not love. Then he says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mystery and have not love. Notice what he says. It's, it's not beneficial. Amen? And I know you and me, I don't want to waste my time down here. I want my life to have meaning. Amen? I want to leave a legacy for my kids, grandkids, and kids, and everybody I come in contact with. Every man, if you want, because I want people to enjoy the journey. Amen? So that's what Paul is sharing here, that love is absolutely necessary in the first three verses. Then in verses four, he started to define what love is. Isn't that a good word? Come on, come on, come on with me. Look at me. He said, love is patient, and it is kind. Aren't those good words? Love is patient, and it is kind. And I said, boy, that is such a wonderful word for us in the society that we live in and the way that we interact with people. Because God is saying to us, in order to build healthy relationships, you got to learn how to love like me. And God types of love is the agape love. Amen. That I make it a decision to love you. Irregardless of what you do, I'm still going to love you. It's not based on performance. Amen. Isn't that good to have a lasting love that's not based on performance? Amen. If you need that, put your hand together and say, God, send that to me. Come on, Lord. I'm, I want you to send it my way. I don't want what you say. I can just be and do who I am. Don't have to worry about trying to please people. Do exactly who you, be exactly who you created me to be, and they're going to love me anyhow. Why? Because love is one of the greatest motivators you and I have. Amen. Notice what he says. He said, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not behave itself. Uh, uh, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and I underline that one. Because some folks, before you even get it, they are all angry and all upset. And if you're always angry and all upset, you can't have any peace, you can't even enjoy life. 
and God wants us to enjoy life. Amen? So really what this whole purpose is about is to expose what love is and why it is the only way to relate to one another. Can we say that again? To expose what love is. And it's the only way, boy, to relate to one another. Amen? So Paul was identifying to the Corinthians, and he was sharing with them, and he was helping them to solve some problems. Hey, man, anybody got any problems out here? That's all right. You don't, 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 don't put your hand up yet. Hey, man, just wait a minute. Hey, man, because he was trying to help them to conquer some things and find some solution to some issues that were going on in their lives. Hey, Amen. And I like what he says. It's they're not easily angered because we live in a society that there's so many angry people. And I said, Lord, we got to teach anger management. The Bible said to be angry, but don't do stuff that's wrong. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? So we got to learn how to detach my anger, amen, from the person to the act of what they're doing. Hey, you can be angry because people are doing something wrong, but don't be angry at the person because it's a spirit, amen? And that's the thing we really want to get into, amen, and that, you know, uh, anger is a, uh, uh, you know, anger is a spirit. And then let's look at verse number six, which is good. It teaches about values in a society that says whatever we do, it's all right, amen? Uh, those of you who are listening to me, God is still alive. He's not dead. The Bible is still relevant in 2021. Amen. No matter what happened, we all going to have to stand before him and give an account for the things that we have done. Amen. Whether you like it or not, don't be, don't, don't wait until the end and decide that you want to decide to change around and make Jesus your choice. Amen. Make him your choice right now so you can enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. And then he said, love, verse 7, love always protects, always trusts, always hope. And he said, love never, ever fails. Amen. And then I jumped down with to verse number 11. Amen. He said, when I was a child, I talked as a child. I understood as a child. Amen. And I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We see so many people that are acting like uh, uh at, at childishly. Amen. You hit me, I'm going to hit you. Uh-huh. You say something bad about me, I'm going to say something about me. Bad, bad about you. We see it uh, going out in society. Yeah, you done shot my cousin, I'm going to shoot your brother. Touch somebody say foolishness. Come, come, can we say it again? Foolishness. We got to be delivered from foolishness. Amen. <laughs> foolishness. The wrath of man can never satisfy the love of God. Amen? So we got to, tell somebody, say we got to let it go. Tell somebody, say got to let it go because love is the more excellent way. And that's the way that God want us to love and to follow him. Amen? And the only way that you and I can. So really come down to verse number uh, 11 when he was talking about growing up. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. Amen. But when I became a man, I did what? I put away childish things. Amen. God calls us to love just as he loves. Amen. Isn't that a good word? If you want to be like Jesus, give me a wave offering. I can see your hands. I can see you online too. Want to be like Jesus. How did Jesus love people? He loved them unconditionally. Thank you. Amen. God loved people unconditionally, just like you said, uh, Faith. And here's what it says. It says that, you know, being loved is the most powerful motivation in the world. Amen? And, and, and beside that, I put down John 3.16. Come on, put that down for just a moment. We're going to get ready to get out of here in a minute. Being loved is one of the most powerful motivators in the world, amen? Our ability to love is often shaped by our experience of love, amen? Let me say that again. Our ability to love is often shaped by our experience of love. We usually love others as we have been loved, amen? 
Now, put down John 3, 16. I started off and said it's a motivator, right? It is. Because God loved me. I can, he empowers me to love others. Huh? God knew some of the things I was going to do. He knew what I was going to say. He knew I wasn't going to always be telling the truth. He knew I wasn't going to always do right. But he loved me anyway. Amen? God's love is unchangeable. He loved them until the end. That's in John 3, John, John 13th chapter. And that was Jesus on his way to the cross. Amen. He had supper with his disciples. He got up from the table, put a towel around him, and he began to wash their feet. Isn't that? He loved them until the end. Even Judas, he watched Judas' feet and knew that Judas was going to betray him. He did, he wasn't, God wasn't partial about love. He loved them, amen, till the end. Amen, unchangeable. His love is divine. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. That's John 15 and 9, amen. And then sacrificially, greater love had no man than this, than to lay down his life for a friend. John's 15, 13, amen. That's powerful, isn't it? How many of you are willing to die for somebody else? I'm going to have to stop preaching. I'm going to have to come out behind this thing, and we're going to have a repentance service. That's right. We're going to have a repentance service in here. Because God said a liar will not what? Enter. Let's be real. Let's be real. Come on. Amen. Come on. Then he said his love was inseparable. Amen. Who should separate us from the love of Christ? Romans 8.35. Amen. So, what we have. So, how do we love like Jesus? What must we do? Number one, we need to come out of our comfort zone. Amen. The, I, lo I love the Bible. When I started out on this journey, I thought I knew what love was all about. Amen. When I, and, and, and let me stop for a moment and let me be plain. And when I found Jesus, amen, I, I thought that I was a lovable guy and I thought I knew what was going on. And I thought I knew how to love. And my love was, if you love me, you're going to buy me this shirt. <laughs> I'm being real. If you love me, you're going to give me these shoes. I'm being real. Amen. My love was always centered toward me. Me. Amen. But God's agape love is outward centered. It's centered toward someone else and not yourself. Amen. And I think that was the biggest thing that I ever learned. Boy, once I became a Christian. And you know what I'm learning as a pastor? I got to love people more. Amen. Some people like me. Some people don't like me. Some people do what I say. Some people won't do what I say. Some people listen to me. Some people won't listen. Do, 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 I, do I have to stop loving the ones that won't listen? Do I have to stop loving the ones that won't do? One of the greatest gifts and the greatest motivators for you and I is that God so loved the world that he gave. And because God gave, you and I can what? Give. Of ourselves. Amen. So what, we, what must we do to love like Jesus? We must come out of our comfort zone. We must become someone different than our normally, normal selves. Amen. Touch somebody and say, we must change. We must change. And I lay it like the way God said it when David found out that he was wrong. Amen. You ever found out you were wrong? Let me stop. You ever found out that you did something wrong and felt sorry about it? And David began to cry. He said, God created me a clean heart. Why? Because from the abundance of the heart, what? What's in the heart going to come out through the mouth? The mouth speaks. And then he said, renew the right, what? The right spirit, what? Amen. 
Love is a spirit. Amen. The fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, meekness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians 5. Amen. So we must be changed. Amen. And look at your verse for just a moment. It says, now, the greatest of these, three things remain. Isn't that something? He's talking about eternity. You can have faith. You can have hope. Amen. But God said the greatest of these is your ability and my ability to love as he loved. And, and, and people, we can't do it without Jesus. We cannot do it without Jesus because the flesh will rise up in a minute, amen? But we need love that lasts. Why? Because there are so many people that are around us that are hurting for authentic relationships where folks are not going to talk about me they're going to receive me just like Jesus received us. Amen. And Jesus, I, he's, he's forever startling people. Amen. What does startling mean? Surprising. When they brought the lady caught in the act of adultery, they said, the law said we should stone her to death. Then Jesus said, you who are without sin, throw the first stone. Amen. And then after all of her accusers left, Jesus looked at her with, notice what it says, it says, love is what? Love is patient and it is kind. The words that you speak to other people need to be patient and they need to be kind. And he said, who are their accusers? And she said, I don't know, Lord, I see none. And then he said, he said, neither do I accuse thee. Go and sin no more. Now abide it. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. love. Amen. Love that lasts. Everybody going to love somebody when they always smile in their face and doing what they want them to do. But when it becomes a difficult thing, can you love me in spite of? Amen. And I always tell the saints, I said, we can't give what we haven't received, and we can't tell what we don't know. Can I say that again? Because we have received love. How many times have God, God, uh, Peter asked, how many times should we forgive him? He said, seven times. Jesus said, 70 times seven. It's not a number on it. Forgiveness is a hard attitude of love. Amen. But anyway, can we say that again? Now, abide it. Now, these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet with me? Hallelujah. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me, please. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come and we love and adore you. And God, we're so grateful for friends who have come and family who has come from far and for near. And God, you talk about love that lasts. Not a love that's superficial or artificial, God, that really that we can choose and we can love people in spite of people. Just like, God, you look beyond our fault and you met our every need. Because love bears all things, love endures all things, and love never fails. And it is true, though we have all these gifts and have not love, it is none beneficial to us that love you. And God, we don't want our labor to be in vain. Oh God, we ask that you would stir up the love that you have deposited deep down within our spirits. 
that the meditation of our hearts and our thoughts will be acceptable in your sight because you are our strength and you are our redeemer, God. And as the Bible tells us, but God so loved the world that you gave. And love is an act. God, help us to be patient and kind as we interact with others, God, and tell them of your love, of your peace, and of your joy. God, we are so grateful for family, that you created family, God. And God, even in our family, God, we have some people that are difficult to love. But God, you said that love is strong and that it covers a multitude of sin, which is wrong. God, help us to reconcile with one another and to repent for the wrong that we have done. That your kingdom can come and that your will be done in our lives down here on earth as it is in heaven, God. Oh, God, the world needs healing. The world needs healing. And God, you have left us into the kingdom for such a time as this. Use us as instruments of your love, of your joy, and of your peace. God, we ask that your spirit will arise within us. And God, we are so grateful that love is a gift from God, not of works that none of us can boast. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, God. We thank you for your unfailing and unwavering love that you drew us with cards of love that cannot be broken. God, we ask for your blessing and that your spirit of love will rise up in us. That God, that we continue to be, and that we become that great army that you have called out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, I pray for those who are under the sound of my voice that don't know you. God, you said if we would confess with our mouths and believe in our heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that God, that you will invite us into your kingdom and that you will become our good shepherd. So God, we pray right now, if that's you, we ask that you would join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I want you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Forgive me for the wrong that I have done. And Lord, I confess I don't know it all right now, but I'm trusting you and I'm believing you. I want you to take over my life. And God, you said with that confession, you said the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And God, we down here on earth, we are rejoicing too. Because you came that we all might have a life that we can have it more abundantly. God, we are thankful, God, that you're taking us to a place that is more than enough. Oh, God, that we may have milk and honey. That, God, that we may find our sufficiency in thee. That you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. God, you loved us enough to give your best. We want to give our best, which is our lives, unto you. Now unto him that can keep us from falling, that will present us faultless and blameless before the Father. May there be glory now and forevermore. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hand together and say, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Touch somebody and say, love that lasts. Love that lasts. Amen. I, you know, I told my wife, you know, she's going to get mad at me. She's going to run out the door. I said, where are you going? She ran out the door. You know, I got ran right behind her. I said, wherever you go, I'm going, girl. I said, I will love you into what? Death. Do us part. When you get tired of that house, I'm tired of that house. When you ready to leave, I'm, I'm going to be quiet. I can tell. <laughs> Is that right, Faith? Come on, Faith. <laughs> anyway, 
We are out. This is such a wonderful day, and I am so excited about all of you being here to join in this wonderful celebration of a new life that God has given into our family. Amen. And so with that, amen. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. And may his peace and spirit go with you. Amen. God bless you. Consider yourselves dismissed. Amen.